What up, what up, my phenomenal, amazing people? Dwight Taylor Sr., your encouragement expert, founder of Real Manhood 101 and pioneer of Manhood Awareness Month. I know you all have been waiting for this exclusive keynote Q&A style with my man, Marcellus Howard, and we're about to jump into that right now. So right now, yes, even before he starts talking, I need you to light up the comments with some emojis, some fire emojis, basketball emojis, whatever you want to do, light those comments up. If you have questions for Marcellus, make sure you drop them in the comments below. Yeah. He'll get to them. I'll let him know that you uh, you know, left some questions. And so we're going to jump right into this. Before I even let him talk, my man, this is what I want people to know about you. Number one, they know about you being the, the YouTuber, being the sensation, yeah. um, being the social media influencer that you are, being the entrepreneur. People know about that. People know about the fact that you have over a half a million followers on Instagram. They know about you having over 1.2 million subscribers <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. But here's what they don't know. They don't know that you're a director. They don't know <laughs> that you're a producer. They don't know that you're a filmmaker. We might dive into that, but I just wanted to put that out there because a lot of people know what you share with them and what they see every day. Yeah. But there's some things about you, man, some hidden gems that most people don't know. And hopefully today we're going to uncover that. So without further ado, everybody, welcome to the screen. My man, Marcellus Howard. What's going on, big dog? What's going on, man? Uh, blessings, man. Blessed to be here. Blessed to wake up another day. Um, That's what's up. So this we're going to do, man. We're going to get right into it. We're not going to hold no punches. We're going to jump right in. Okay. So first and foremost, first question, how old are you? 24. I have 24. 24 I'm, getting, years young. I'm getting I'm getting older day by day. Okay. 24. And um, I have a question that I like to ask everybody that we interview is uh what's your favorite food? Ooh, dang, that's a good question. Uh probably either pasta, like spaghetti pasta marinara, or like vegan pizza, because I'm vegan, of course. Um okay. but yeah, probably probably that. that's probably my go-to. Oh, but and like potato, like fries and hash browns, stuff like that. Got you. Vegan, huh? Oh, yeah. I've been vegan since last January. It's over a year now. You, my, when my eyebrows went up like that, that's me judging you. But it is what it is. Yeah, vegan. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, hey, hey, let's jump into that, though. What what made you, you know, if you can share with the young kings that are watching, because some of them may not even know what vegan is. So maybe yeah. if you can tap into that. But what made you, you know, decide that route? And, and everything we talk about is about making decisions. So something in you made you decide that or something that you learned. Share just a little bit about that. Um, I was just curious. I see my sister and her boyfriend, uh, they were vegans. So when I seen that, I was just like, hmm, maybe I can do it too. Uh, I didn't really do no research behind it or anything. I didn't watch no shows. I didn't watch any informational videos about it. I just did it kind of cold turkey. And then I watched videos afterwards and it confirmed my decision. And then I, I'm never going to look back. If, if any vegans are watching... Oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't say, well, well, being a vegan means you don't eat meat or dairy. So everything is plant-based. So like, I can't do cereal? Uh, you can do cereal with soy milk, like um, with it, uh, almond milk. It's it's like water and like uh, like I guess I forgot. It's like stuff mashed up. It's it's really fire. They have like vanilla almond milk. Um, so they, you're just gonna lie to the people and say that it's fire? <laughs> it is. It is though. I, hey, hey, do I promise you right now? If you if you go to the store and get soy vanilla soy milk, it will change your life. It, it has a different taste to it. It's not like milk. Oh, I'm not even gonna dive into what milk really okay. is. I don't want to give him that don't information. Do that. Yet. Don't do it to me. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so uh, if there's any vegans, drop it in the comments. Anybody willing to to try, you know, the vegan lifestyle? Drop it in the comments. Maybe Marcellus can give you some things after we get off here. Yes, sir. That you can try. Let's jump into this first uh, this first question that we've been getting from some of the young kings about you is. What are you passionate about? Oh, actually, I'm passionate about a few things. I'll give you, I'll give you two things I'm passionate about. Man, I'm passionate about getting a better relationship with the Lord. Um, that that's what drives me the most. And mm -hmm. I'm passionate about family. Family, really, you know, what I mean, like everything I do is for my family. You know, I want, you know, my 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 mom and dad to be set, my sister to be set, my kids, my future kids. You know, what I'm saying my kids' kids to be set. That's just what drives me. That's my that's what I'm passionate about, like longevity. I would say. I love it. I love it. So share with them why for you it's important to have the right people around you, the right team around you, those people who are pushing you to greatness instead of pulling you away from it. Like, why is it important for Marcellus to have a solid support system? Uh, for me, it's 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 very important because, you know, I like what I do in my field, um, you can't do anything alone. You know what I'm saying? You can only do videos by yourself for so long. And then it comes to a time where you're going to you have to rely on people and need help. And I found that early i was like i need help and i was like me asking it is not you know 
being, you know, a weaker person or being vulnerable. It's actually being a stronger person because you're actually knowing that, okay, I need help with this stuff. I need people to come help me film and I need feedback on this video, feedback on these, you know, merchandise products um, and like all, all these video ideas and stuff like that too. And, you know, having a good support system for me helps me out because it gives me clarity. It gives me comfort and it gives me a, a vision of where I can go and then what to cut off and what to keep on. So like, I, I have a pretty good team, man. You know, I have a pretty good system that, that we know each other pretty well. You know, even my girls, family as well, they help me out as well. So I, I have a good team that gives me all different types of feedback that helps me. Ultimately, it's my decision with, with, with what I do with it. But a support system is, is a necessity. Uh, without that, I wouldn't have a million subscribers, 500,000 IG, whatever you want to call it, it at all, period. Stun. Stun on them real quick. Anyway, <laughs> hey, but, but, but let me share with the young king something that my man pointed out. He said that, one, he's not afraid to ask for help. Now, you know, Marcellus, as being 24, I know as being 38, as men, <laughs> right? It is very difficult sometimes for us to ask for help, especially our young kings that are watching this right now. We got some sixth graders all the way to 12th graders and even older and maybe some younger, yeah. right? I want to encourage them, based off what you just said, to not be afraid to ask for help. Exactly. Because asking for help is not a weakness. It's actually a strength. Because like you said, it, it's a sign of self-awareness. You know that you need help to get to where you're trying to go or become the person that you desire to be. And so we have to make sure that we surround ourselves with the right people and not be afraid to ask for help. So if you're willing to, to ask for help, every young king watching this, if you're willing to ask for help, put help in the comments. Like right now, just type in help, H-E-L-P. Hopefully y'all know how to spell that. <laughs> so be vulnerable, it's okay. <laughs> so next question that we wanna, um, we wanna direct to the middle schoolers. Okay. What was your biggest challenge or one of your biggest challenges when you were in middle school? Man, um, you know, I recently dropped a video saying goodbye to the backyard. And one of my things that I said, if you learn anything from me, let it be this, is, is, is to um, stand out, never fit in um, mm -hmm. or never blend in. Because in middle school, I found myself trying to blend in a lot. You know what I'm saying? Doing stuff that I normally wouldn't do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, hanging around the wrong people sometimes and... I had to really find myself at that age because at that age you can you know easily be influenced to do other things and it i got to a point where like one of my best friends that i've been friends with since man like kindergarten like dang near five years old i seen who he was hanging around he was hanging around the wrong crowd and i could easily join that crowd but then me and him split ways because i was like bro i can't rock how you rocking and then it got to one day where he tried to fight me and then that's when I really realized, I was like, okay, I was like, I got I to gotta just stand down and do my own thing. For me, I just stood up for myself, man. You know, I was like, you know, I want to be, I want to be something greater. I want to stand out. So that was, that was what was big for me, trying to stand out and not, and not blend in. So I love that, man. I love that. And for those who have been following Real Manhood, you know that the R in Real Manhood is reject passivity. Mm -hmm. And one thing that Marcellus is talking about is really doing that. He's not being passive. As, as a young person, he wasn't passive. He was trying to be intentional and be direct about standing out, about getting around the right circle. So again, make sure you reject passivity. Make sure that you put yourself in a space where you're not trying to fit in. You were created to be unique, to be special, and to stand out. So uh, now let's take it to high school, right? Because we got some high schoolers on here. Okay. And, and I don't know if the answer is going to be the same, but I, I want to give you that same question. What was one of your biggest challenges, not not in middle school anymore, but now transitioning to high school? Learning how to become a man. Because once once you hit 14, four years later, you know, usually real life hits you. That's when college starts. That's when you, you know, you're supposed to get actual jobs and provide for yourself, right? That's when you start, yeah, that's when you have to start providing for yourself. And that's what I try to focus on was becoming a better man for the future. Um, and I think I've done a pretty good job because where I've where I'm at today from where I came from when I was 14 years old is like a full 180. Like it's kind of crazy. Who do you have in your life to keep you accountable to being the best version of you that you can be? Right. We talk about accountability all the time. Yeah. Who are some people or one person that you have in your life? that keeps you accountable to making sure that you follow through on the things that you say you wanna do and the man that you wanna become? Uh, I have a few, man. Um, I mean, it starts with you, uh, you know, so you, uh, I got a few teachers in high school, Miss Armbrust um, and Senior Garza that I keep in contact with. Um, 
Mr. Armbrest, Mr. Alvarez, a lot of the, a lot of my capital people, uh, all, all my family, you know, my sister, mom, dad, uh, my girlfriend for sure. She holds me accountable. She'll tell me like, "Sell, that was not cool," or like, "What are you saying? Like, what are you doing? Like, that's not you." You know, holding me accountable in that way. So accountability is big for you. Like having people that help you stay on track is a big. Yeah, deal. man, you can't you can't have no yes man in this world, man. You, I, I see I see a lot of time everybody has a yes man because they don't want to be told no. Come on now. Like you know, I I get mad sometimes. You know, like my like I'll give you an example. My girl should be like, yeah, that like, like the video is cool, but I think you should do this, this, and that. And I'm like, dang, y'all, you don't like the video? She's like, no, I'm just you know I want to see you do better. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I I can do better. So then, you know, I go to my editor, I'm like, yo, we got to, you know, add this, this and that and, and make this video more better because, you know, I got more feedback, which is, it's always good to have feedback, man. When you, when you have someone telling you yes at everything, you're going to fail 100% of the time. You're going to fail, period. Real quick, if y'all getting any value from what my man Marcellus is saying, go ahead and put some 100 emojis, <laughs> put some fire emojis, put some clapping hands, do something because right now my man is dropping gems and he's only 24 years young. And we're going to come back to that in a minute. But here's the next question I want to ask you. What is your definition of a real man? Oh, that's, that's a tough one. Okay. Um, mind you guys, by the way, these are all questions I have not prepared for. I, I told him, I said, I don't want to prepare for none of these questions, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, before we go, go live over here. So um, being a real man means you're, you know, you're honorable. Um, you, you have to have integrity. You have to be humble. Um, you have to have a sense of grace mm. for others mm. um you got to be graceful and and i feel like you have to be full you know you can't be a real man and be empty you know what i mean you can't search for things that don't fill you and, and and think you're gonna be a real man clothes don't make you a real man weapons don't make you a real man they, what also makes you a real man though is love man love on others i want to just backtrack real quick man you said something that I'm actually about to tweet, and so I'm gonna say that it's mine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but, uh, you said a real man can't be empty. Yeah, can't that be. right there is profound, bro. Because as I think about me as a real man, me as being a husband, me as being a father, me mm -hmm. being a mentor, a brother, uncle, like I have so many people who count and depend on me, and there's no way that I can be the best version for them if I'm empty, yes, right? Like I can't be empty and trying to pour out something. We can't pour out what we don't have. 100%. We can't give what we don't have. And so I, I just think that that's so profound, man, at 24 years young for you to say a real man can't be empty. There's so many males. And I want to say this, right? I want to be very specific with my words because there are some 46 year old males who have not become real men and it might just be the fact that they've been walking around here empty, yes. thinking that they can find their fullness in the materials, the cars, the clothes, all those mm -hmm. things that you've mentioned, but we have to be full, right? So that we can be filled up and that can overflow to everybody that we were meant to impact. Man, I, exactly. I, I love that, bro. This young man right here, 24 <laughs> years young, is the owner of his first home. How does that feel, man? Woo, man, it's... It's like a wave of emotions, right? Because um, you grow up wanting a big mansion, a big fat house, and then as reality kicks in, you realize you just want something that fits you. And mm. and when I found this house, it fit me, you know, perfectly. Like as soon as we walked in with my agent, I said, "This is the one." Let's put an offer. We put an offer in that day. So I mean, this process has been crazy. You know, I kind of came in. Uh, the house was a different color scheme, so I changed the whole color scheme. Basically, flipped the house. Um, and then we redid the whole backyard as you guys seen if you guys haven't seen yet I made a video of it and It was a fun process cost a lot of money But this is something I'd rather spend a lot of money on rather than spending money in the clubs and the cars and all that so Come on, man. You know what I mean? Okay, let's just stop right there <laughs> The E in real, real manhood is expect the greater reward and yeah. when I hear that it sounds like that's what you did like you, you made your money the way that you made it through your craft, through your passion, yep. uh, turned it into a profession. And then you made a decision mm -hmm. to say, I'm either going to save this money to invest in something, right? Yep. That, that can that can be with me long term, longevity. I can own it or I could blow it right now. Blow it right now. Blow it on Easy. Easy. That, that every other 24 to 34 to 44 to 54, some 54 year old men is blowing money. So let's stop. Anyway. <laughs> But, but that are blowing money and not saving and then investing. And so when I think about expecting a greater reward, I, I'm telling you, as soon as you told me that you purchased the home, I told my wife, I said, 
he's literally living out this definition that I live by because my man had to have the thought process in mind to say, you know what, although I'm 24, yep. or however old you were when you first started saving the money that, that you had to invest, like you were thinking futuristically, you, you had vision, the thing you mentioned earlier, right? Like you had vision yeah. and you probably had a great number of people around you or even just a strong few who were giving you some wisdom and insight on why it would be important to invest in purchasing your own home. So I just wanna say, man, congratulations. Thank you. I'm excited for you. Share some advice, man, that, that, that you can give to them. Man, a few things, man. In this process, you know, I learned a lot about myself, right? So um, I did a lot of self-reflecting and, and, and a couple of things I realized was, one, um, it's not that hard to own a home. It's really not. The only, the only, the only thing that's tougher is you might've put a little more money down or the the process of escrow, which is when you're in contract, takes about 30 days. So you have to wait longer to get your keys. But okay. there's still programs out there for people that you know can't afford down payment. So they have down payment uh, assistant programs. They have all type of like they have grant programs that you don't have to give back. Like once you once you get a grant, you don't have to pay it back. It's your money. They have all type of programs out there, so it's not really hard. So in this process, about a year back, um, a friend of mine was saying, yeah, man, um, you know, when are you gonna come to LA with us? And I was like, for what? And he's like, you know, come out there, get some content, you know, uh, rent a house, whatever. I was like, nah, bro, I'm trying to own a crib. And he's like, bro, worry about that later. And I was like, nah, I was like, you're older than me. And I'm like, you're renting. I'm trying to own something right now. Why would I go to LA to rent, to get more money, right? Cause I can make more money out there. But I'm, I've never been a, a money chaser, right? I'm just a happiness chaser. I, I like chasing happiness. So I told him, I was like, no, I'm, I'm staying I'm staying in Sacramento. I'm going to own me a home. Uh, and I'm going to do it the right way. You know what I mean? Uh, LA will always be there. You know, a flight away, a drive away. But for me, right now, I'm trying to provide longevity for my life. And this is how you create generational wealth by doing such. And it's really not that hard. Just do research, man. Just research. And it's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Once you learn more about the home process, you realize how fun it is and, and how great it is once it's done. Because once you get that key... Come and, you don't, and you don't have to respond to anybody, no landlord, no manager, no nothing. Fire and, emojis. Fire you feel emojis. me? And, 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 and you're responding to yourself, doing whatever you want to your house, inside, outside. There's no better feeling, man. There's, there's no better feeling when you own something. It's like owning your first pair of shoes, man, that you bought. It's kind of like, whoa, Come I on. bought these pair of shoes. And then, you know, fast forwarding tenfold, you bought your own house. This is, this is the biggest purchase. Real estate is the biggest purchase. Young Kings. Out of all he said, I don't even I don't even want you to only take the words that he said. I want you to, if you have to replay this, right? I want you to look at the expression on his face as he talks about owning his own. Woo! Home. It's it's I so mean, joyful. I've smiling since we start talking about it, right? And, and and it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing for me to watch um, as somebody who's seen you all the way since high school and to where you are now. It's just a beautiful thing to watch your evolution. If you can go back to your 18 year old self, what's one piece of advice that you would give the 18 year old Marcellus? Well, first of all, you know, just in the bigger perspective, I wouldn't change a thing. Mm. But if I could give one piece of advice, it would be to be more mindful early on. Because early on, I was, you know, just so driven to, you know, D1 basketball, NBA. Like, that was it. You, like, no one could tell me anything. I wasn't thinking about houses, thinking about, investing you know i was thinking about girls and you know playing basketball that's really what it was but if if i you know had been more mindful of my surrounding um i would have used my time more valuably um in my craft you know i didn't put the work in that it required to go d1 i didn't put the work in it required to play pro i was just talented so had i put more work in i'm, I'm gonna tell you all this when i was in college my sophomore year junior class was averaging 22 points, right? About three three assists. And during that time, I would probably work out twice a week. I was just naturally just, I'll pull up to a game, drop 40, like just whatever. As time grew on, and you know, I went to college, play D2, I realized I was like, dang, I haven't put the work in to really be at the top of my, you know what I'm saying, at the, at the top of my game. I was injured, you know, broke my ankle, tore an ACL. So I kind of was just like, whatever, I'm over it. But if I was more mindful, I would have put more work in and, and really dived into that Michael Jordan muscle, you know what I'm saying? Where 
everything I do, I work hard at. Like, you know, I wasn't necessarily working hard in the books. It just came easy, right? Yeah. But had I worked had I worked hard at it, everything would have came easier. So if, if you're out there saying you want to be a professional athlete or the, the best spelling bee champ, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to be, really think like, am I putting in the work yeah. every day? Every day, not just in that craft, but everything around it. It's like when you're sore, they always say to massage the muscles around it, not the direct source. So when you want to be great at basketball, you got to be good at school, relationships, you got to be good at working out, sleeping, stretching, all things around it that focus around the center. Never focus just on basketball or focus on your craft. Come on, man. I, you know what? I, I think that's the mic drop right there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I think that's where we can we can leave this thing. Hey, man, I just want to thank you for being involved in Real Manhood. You've been involved for a while now, man. Yes, sir. Um, and we have so much more to do together. Hey, we're giving away some money. That's right. We're going to give away $75. I'm going to say that again. We're going to give away $75. But Shoot, the way they are going to get this giveaway is you are going to go to the Real Manhood 101 Instagram account, find Marcellus's picture, answer the question under the picture on that page, and we're gonna pick somebody randomly to give okay. away seventy five dollars. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna pick two people, one one for the money, and I'll give one a personal shout out. Come on now, easy. That's how added easy. value. Let's go. Let's get Let's it. I, I might need a shout out though, because I need to get my followers up. So I got you. <laughs> A round of applause, everybody, to my guy, Marcellus Howard. Thank you, brother, and uh, we'll tap in soon. Yes, sir. Likewise, I appreciate you, man.